Hi there and welcome to another video. Here I'm going to be going over my Etch-a-Sketch project which is in the JavaScript component of the foundations part of Odin project. And this is the second project that you'll be doing. It's not a simple one, there's quite a few technical things going on in the background here. So just a quick run through of what I built here. We just have an Etch-a-Sketch title which has kind of a fun CSS color gradient moving in behind the text here that you can see. Uh, and then we have a label with an input box and a submit button. And then we have some radio buttons where you can select a color and an eraser. And then a clear button which will clear the entire grid. And then we have the grid which by default is a 10 by 10 grid. And at the bottom we have the obligatory footer. So there's a few little uh, things that happen when you interact with the page. So for example when you focus on the input box. So AP tag beneath gets filled so JavaScript fills it with a prompt enter a number between 2 and 99. Uh, there's also a validation here so if I ignore that and I type in text and try to submit it says make sure it's a number from 2 to 99. So if we make it 15 you'll see that I also have kind of a mirror text here so there's another HTML element here that's getting filled using JavaScript mirroring this. So when we submit that we now have a 15 by 15 grid and that ha happens automatically instantly so if you're thinking how that's working here your JavaScript is actually creating these divs on the fly so it creates them on page load when there is no number provided there's a default 10 by 10 and then when a number is provided it creates uh, a grid of that number and just for functionality if I select the black radio button and hover it's not click down it's just hover over any of these divs then their background color is turned to black. Same for red, blue, and then there's a random color selector as well, and then an eraser, and then a clear button, which clears everything. Okay, so let's take a look at my repository here, the files. So the index HTML is your basic HTML document got our title here and linking to our style sheet and then our script tag to an external JavaScript file is at the bottom. Okay so we have a header ID which is just where I have that gradient background title. There is a div for what I've called a form here but it just contains the label for the input text box uh, and then that p tag which copies the input and then a button for submit and then this p tag down here is where the prompt is generated by JavaScript. Then I have another div where all the radio buttons live, where the clear button lives. And then the grid is actually contained within these two tags. So there's a div class canvas and a div class container. And you could probably spot that I should format, have formatted these better than I did. And there is the div for the footer. So the JavaScript, this is where a lot of the magic gets put into here, and I'll show you how that happens. But first, just take a quick peek at CSS. Okay, so I've imported a font. I believe that was for the title. And there's a few things in here that you wouldn't have been covered. Again, I was playing around with CSS using things that I found online. But I some things you'll be familiar with. I, I arranged the page using Flexbox. And the grid as well itself, I arrange using Flexbox. But you could also use CSS grid. Uh, this is the CSS that just makes the color gradient move behind <coughs> behind the, the header. And here is the, so this container, that div container, this is the CSS that makes, uh, so I set it to a fixed width and height of 600 pixels, and then using flex with a direction column to create the grid every time and the same in the row. So the, the row div holds the column divs and they are also flexed and I use flex one to make it square. And the rest I think is fairly straightforward. But you can take a look at this uh, in the comments, the link to this repository. Um, okay, so let's take a look now at the script. So it's quite a bit happening here and, and as always this was my second program that I wrote and there's certainly many improvements that I could make now if I was re redesigning this. 
chiefly I'd say the functions should be much more concise and only doing one thing. And one thing I did start doing here was using comments and I highly recommend you comment your code for yourself in the future or anyone else who comes along to read your code. Uh, there's kind of the Goldilocks, not too long, not too short, make them descriptive. I tried to aim for one liners or, or two lines for a, you know, a very large function here, but I find them very helpful. And again, I should be using constants where possible. But I start off by defining some uh, variables here that are then connected to HTML, HTML elements using query selectors or classes and get element by ID for IDs. And then I add event listeners to these. Um, so for example, when the user value in, in the input box is focused, uh, it runs the entry hint function, or when it's key up, it runs the duplicate grid function, which is that copycat text that pops up to the side. Uh, the user submit button executes make grid function, and the clear button executes clear grid function. And upon page load, I make it run the make grid and the draw functions. So my comment here, it says I do this to make the 10 by 10 grid uh, and make sure that it is drawable. So both of these functions have to be executed to make it usable. Uh, and okay, this function here, duplicate grid. So this just indicates to the user it's a grid. So if you type in four, it just says four by four grid. Uh, so all that is doing here is declaring a variable user grid, which is equal to the value being entered. And then it's uh, using text content of this HTML tag and just putting in an X and then plus the user grid value. That's the value that gets entered. Okay, and then there's the function entry hint. So I have a comment here, save space and clutter on page with an appear and disappear user instructions. So that's what something I wanted to achieve and that P tag, uh, when you load the page or when you make a new grid, it disappears. And then when you focus on the input text box, uh, text gets populated in there using, again, the dot text content. And this is just for the prompt, enter a number between two and 99. The validation error will come in the next function. So that's if you don't enter in a number between 2 and 99. Okay, this next function makes nested divs that are organized using Flexbox. And the invalid entries into that input box do get a warning. The default grid that I've set here is a 10 by 10, else it's user defined. Okay, so this is a pretty big function. I would certainly break this down into multiple functions if I wrote it again, but I'll do my best to go through it in a way that makes sense. So function make grid. So first off, we define number, which is equal to the value that the user enters into that input box. And if that is less than zero or greater than 99, or is not a number, i.e. is text, then the text content of that prompt p tag is filled with make sure it's a number from two to 99, as I had demonstrated to you. Otherwise, if it's, if it's good, uh, then set these HTML elements to blank, and if the number is equal to zero or greater than 99 or is blank itself, for example, on page load, this would uh, satisfy all of these conditions or at least uh, one of these conditions. <coughs> then you make a default grid that is 10 by 10. So what that's doing here is actually using nested for loops because when you wanna make a grid, you have to have a number of rows, say 10 rows, but then to make your columns, you have to have 10 divs within each row. So you can imagine that's 10 by 10, and that ends up with 100 cells. So what we have here is a for loop 10 times that makes the row divs. So what's happening here in a little more detail is we're actually having to create new elements, new divs, right? Because they don't exist on page load. We have to create them. So we define this variable row to document create element div. And then we have to add a class to it. So we make this row class list add row. So it now becomes a row class that we can target with CSS. And then we have to append that to the container div uh, row. Okay, so that's, there's a lot of things happening there, but we're creating an element, we're adding a class, and then we are appending that child to an existing element in the, in the document object model. And then to make the nested uh, columns, we're doing the same thing again. 
um, but then we are changing it so the class list is column instead and it's being appended to column. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, else, so you can see there's a very long function, it shouldn't be this long. If, if these conditions are not met, then it's going to come down here to the else and it's going to say, okay, so in this example it would be a number between 2 and 99 gets entered, it would trigger this else. So it's saying, okay, let's uh, execute nested for loops that are equal in the number of iterations to the number that the user enters. So the same thing is happening again. If you entered in 15 like I did, then it's going to run through this nested loop 15 times. So it's going to make 15 rows, and within each row it's going to make 15 divs for the columns. And same thing, creating elements, adding a class name, and appending that element to the row div. And that is how the grid gets made. It's quite challenging to get your head around it for the first time, but once you start playing around with it, it will make sense. And it really helped me to watch a couple videos on YouTube about using nested for loops and what that does. Okay, so after that's done, the draw function is executed. And the reason that is, is because once you've made a custom grid, I have to you have to have the draw function executed to allow you to be able to draw. And that looks like this. But here I define the columns to all HTML tags that have class column. <coughs> and I have to uh, enable, to enable draw, there has to be an event listener added to each one of these columns. And that's why you have to execute the draw function because you've made all these divs, but they don't have an event listener on them. So you can hover, you can click or whatever, and nothing will happen. So you're gonna loop through all of the divs and add an event listener. And the, the way that you figure out how many times you have to iterate over them with a loop is you use the columns.length. So that will actually tell you how many classes you have column, which is very handy. Okay, and then next is the function for change color. I should format this with a space here just for readability. But this is defining the, um, this, this is attaching these variables here to these HTML tags so for example, black pen, red pen, blue pen, rainbow, and eraser. So those HTML elements are now attached to these variables. And sorry if you can hear my son crying. He's, uh, he's, he's only three weeks old and uh, he has these bouts of silence and sleep and then crying. Uh, okay, and then it runs into an if else. So basic, really, really simple. If the black radio is checked, then the, uh, this element i.e. The, the div, this, is what is res responding to, referring to, is the div that you're hovering over. Its style, background color, is equal to black. And it's again the same for red and blue. And eraser, well, you're just setting it to blank, so it's a transparent div. And then the rainbow one was tricky. I had to look this one up on Stack Overflow, and somebody had provided this handy uh, piece of code here. So you're using math floor and math random to pick a value from complete black all the way through to complete white, which apparently has this many possibilities. And then we want to convert that to string in to enable us to have a hex code. And then all we need to do is set that background color equal to a pound sign and append this code that comes out. And then finally, the clear grid function, which just gets rid of everything in the grid. This one's pretty straightforward, but again, it uses a for loop because you have to loop through every single div that's within that grid. And so I set columns equal to, um, again, the class name column. And we have to loop through again the length of all the column classes. And that iterates over every single div and sets the background color to blank. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, there was a lot going on here and this one was tricky. It took me a day just to figure out how to make my nested divs. And once I got that going, then the rest kind of fell into place. But that was certainly the hardest one, figuring out that I actually had to use a nested for loop. And there are other ways to do this as well. This isn't the only way to do it. So let me know what you've done. I'd be curious to know, maybe uh, put a link to your repository in the comments. I would love to take a look. Or if you have any questions, also 
make a comment and uh, good luck.